Good morning, everybody. We are going to continue on with our changes in ecosystems. If you are following along in the PDF, it is pages 12 and 13 that we are going to read today. I will put a copy of these two pages in the folder for this week so that you can look at the two pages as we follow along. I was not able to find the PDF file online like I was with the other one. So at this point, you're just going to have to bear with me and do a, uh, two pages at a time. You won't be able to read ahead. Okay. Uh, last week, we talked about some changes that can happen in the ecosystem as a result of natural events, uh, flooding, drought, um, storms, fires. Those are some of the things that we talked about that could cause a change in an ecosystem. And then we also talked about changes in ecosystems that could happen as a result of living things. Um, for example, a beaver dam was one that we used. <clears throat> Excuse me. How? <coughs> oh, I am so sorry. <clears throat> I hope I didn't cough in my microphone. Um, we talked about a beaver dam and how when a beaver we have a, a stream or a river moving along, and then a beaver will build a dam at whatever point the beaver decides is a good spot. And then the water behind that dam will start, start to build up and spread out, whereas the water that goes in front of the dam will move down to just a little trickle. So how a beaver dam can change the ecosystem we talked about overgrowth, how when forests are just allowed to do whatever they want to, how farmland will eventually revert back to the overgrowth of the forest like we have here in Northwest Arkansas. And we also talked about disease, how disease can kill off um, one particular species. If a disease attacks one particular species and that species is killed off, that will affect the entire ecosystem because whatever was relying on that particular species for food is going to be affected and their population will start to decrease and it will have a domino effect on each of the other species that interact in that food web, which is what we talked about last week or the week before. We talked about in our last unit anyway, I know that. Okay, so today we're gonna continue on with our changes in ecosystem. We are gonna be on page 12 in our um, Delta Reader. And we're going to continue on to talk about humans and their impact on the ecosystem. Humans make changes in many ecosystems. For example, people sometimes bring a plant or an animal to a place where it does not usually live. These plants or animals are called introduced species. Introduced species can harm other organisms. Introduced species can also compete with other organisms for resources. The new habitat may not have an animal that eats that introduced species. And if so, the introduced species can multiply quickly. A European insect called a gypsy moth was brought into the United States in about 1869. It was thought that the insect could be used for making silk. At first, the moths were kept in one place, but some of the moths got away. And now gypsy moths have spread across the northeastern United States and beyond. Gypsy moth caterpillars have harmed many trees by eating the leaves. And here's a picture of a gypsy moth. You have probably seen those. I think here in northwest Arkansas, we call them webworms. People also change ecosystems. Oh, my voice changed too. People also change ecosystems by using or developing the land. We often clear land for new buildings or roads. We also build highways, bridges, and dams. Raising animals, growing crops, and digging mines can change the land too. Land development can make habitats much smaller. Plants and animals in developed areas may have less space, and that's one of the things they need, space to grow. Less food, that's another thing that a living thing needs, an animal, and less water. They may no longer find what they need to stay alive. And as a result, these plants and animals, they may move to other areas. And this may cause more competition in those other areas. People also use land for getting rid of trash. More than half of our solid waste is put in landfills. That's garbage. That's what they're talking about. Solid waste is trash. It's garbage. Landfills take up space that was once a home for plants and animals. 
People might must design landfills very carefully. Otherwise, the waste can leak and harm nearby habitats. Here's a picture up here on top of a tortoise. And see how the land around the tortoise, how that was developed. And now there is a road there. So the tortoise has to try and figure out how is it going to get across the road to the water or food source or whatever it used to go to on the other side. And it has to be careful because that's a highway. And we all know that tortoises move very slowly. And here is a chart showing how we get rid of, of our wastes. I think you can see it. People in the United States, they got rid of, um, what is that word? About, I couldn't read it backwards. Whoops, let me put that there so you can see it. About 251 million tons of solid waste in 2006. So this graph shows, I guess that word just shows. This graph shows how much of the waste was put into landfills. How much of it was recycled and how much of it was burned? Yep, burned. So if you can see, let me try to hold it still. The blue part is what was put in landfills. The green part is what was in recycled. And the red part is what is burned. So far and away, humans put most of our solid waste in landfills. All right, that's where we're going to stop today. And I have a few questions that I'm going to ask you. It seems like that's a really short lesson. It's a seven-minute lesson. Hmm. See if you can remember. What is an introduced species? Exactly what it sounds. That's exactly what it is. An introduced species is a plant or an animal that's brought into an area or to a place where it does not normally live. That's an introduced species. These can harm other organisms that live there by competing with the other organism, or they can actually eat the other organisms and kill the other organisms. And if there is nothing that is a natural predator, remember a predator is something that eats something else. If that introduced species does not have a natural predator, then the population will explode and it will eventually take over that area and force the natural organisms out of that area. Oh my goodness, I just answered question two. What can happen in the habitat if it does not have an animal that eats the introduced species? Yes, it can overgrow, it can multiply quickly. What is an example of an introduced species? Do you remember the example that they gave us? Yes, the gypsy moth. They were introduced into, it's a European gypsy moth is the official name. They were introduced into the United States in 1869. And one of them or some of them escaped from where they were being kept to produce silk. And they rapidly multiplied and they have taken over the northeastern area and they damage trees because the caterpillars eat so many leaves. Oh, goodness. I probably need to read these questions ahead. Why was it brought to the United States? <gasps> to make silk. Yes, very good. And what happened with the moth? Yes, a couple of them escaped. And now they spread across the northeastern United States and they damage the trees by eating their leaves. How do people change ecosystems? We talked about two major ways that people change ecosystems. What was one of those? Yes, by clearing the land so that they can build roads, bridges, dams. That's one way. And what's another way? Raising animals, raising crops, and digging mines. So they can clear the land for travel, or they can use the land for something other than it originally was used for. So they can use it for farming or for raising animals or for mining as well. What's wrong with land development? potentially wrong with it. Well, it can make habitats smaller, which means that the plants and the animals have less space, less water, less food. 
and they may basically may not have enough resources to even stay alive. They may be so constricted in their space and their resources that they may not even be able to stay alive. So that's one thing that could be wrong with land development. I'm not saying land development is necessarily wrong. I'm saying according to our book, because it changes an environment, it changes an ecosystem, and it could damage that ecosystem and possibly kill those organisms, that's one thing that is wrong with it. What else do people sometimes use land for? Yes, we use it to get rid of our trash. And that is wrong. I am just going to say that. That is not right. Do you remember by the chart how much of our solid waste is pu actually put into landfills? How much of it is? Yeah, more than half of it. More than half of it is put into landfills. Why do you think that that might be bad? Well, the, yes, these landfills take up space. They take up space that organisms normally would be a home for an organism. So for a plant or an animal, this space is now taken up with trash. What's something else that can happen? Yes, if it is not disposed of properly, that solid waste can leak into the environment around it. And so it can harm the habitats around it. How much of our... Um, solid waste do we recycle? Let's look at the chart. According to the chart, how much of it do we recycle? If you said 80 million tons, you are correct. 80 million tons is what we recycle. And again, according to this chart, how much do we put into landfills? Yes, 140 million, 140 million tons is put into landfills. That's a lot of trash that we're putting into landfills. Wow. Think about that. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow and we will take some notes on what we just read today and we'll add to our interactive notebooks. You guys have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.